I want to talk to you for a minute here about the spirit of Antichrist. What is the spirit of Antichrist? Uh, well, 1 John chapter 4 talks about it, and I will tell you right now that there is a literal, real way to get the spirit of Antichrist into a church someplace. And I'm talking you can invoke it, and it will come into your church. And I'm going to tell you how it's done. Let's go to the scripture first in your King James Bible. 1 John chapter 4 Verses 1 through 6, we'll read those verses. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Here's how you can tell the Spirit of God, in other words. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Notice the key word, is. That's present tense. Okay? It's very important. We'll get back to that. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God, and every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God, and this is that spirit of Antichrist. Whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the, of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God, he that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Two other spirits there. Spirit of truth is the Holy Spirit. Spirit of error is the devil. He's the father of lies. And an Antichrist spirit is directly tied into Satan. So what is the spirit of Antichrist? You're given a test. If that spirit confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, then it's of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. See, right now, you're looking at me. My name is Brian Denlinger. And you say, Brian Denlinger is preaching. Why? Because I am standing here. You're looking at me. You're listening to me. I, that, you know, you're saying Brian Denlinger is preaching. I'm here. I'm living. I'm alive. Okay? You say, Brian Denlinger has preached. Well, that's past tense. I could still be alive with a statement like that, or you can say, you know, he's has been preaching in the past, meaning he's dead and gone. Is means it's live. Has means past tense. You understanding? Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Why? He's still alive right now has come in the flesh. Well, Muhammad has come in the flesh. Buddha has come in the flesh. Confucius has come in the flesh. There you are not. It's not that you can say Muhammad is in the flesh. Very, 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 very vital, important, extremely important. Let me read some of the uh, new versions for you, the uh, easier to understand. You know, we, we need to have Bibles that are easier for the world, lost world to understand. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. Hmm. Interesting. Let's look at some of these uh, new versions. 1 John chapter 4, verse 2, English Standard Version. I'll put it up on the screen here. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that, that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. Uh-oh. It's a spirit of Antichrist. 1 John chapter 4, verse 2, New Revised Standard Version. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth, confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. Nearly identical to the ESV. And again, has come from God. You know, Spirit of Antichrist. 1 John chapter 4, verse 2, Holman Christian Standard Bible. This is how you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit who confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh uh, is from God. Again, they're saying the same thing. Has come in the flesh. 1 John 4, 2 in the Living Bible. Today's Living Bible. And the way to find out if their message is from the Holy Spirit is to ask, does it really agree that Jesus Christ, God's Son, actually became man with a human body? If so, then the message is from God. Became man with a human body. Well, that's past tense. It's not is come in the flesh. It's past tense. Spirit of Antichrist again. 1 John chapter 4, verse 2, New American Standard Bible. 
By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. Spirit of Antichrist, again. 1 John 4, 2, and the New King James Version. It's just that, like the King James, just without the these and thous. <laughs> no, wrong. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. Jesus is a has-been in all these new versions. They're different than any other religious leader that lived and died and is buried. It's not that he is come in the flesh. He's not still living, you see. You say, well, but we can prove it from other scriptures that he that, that, that these new versions teach that Jesus is still alive, and, and we can we can prove. But why fail the test for the spirit of Antichrist? Every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Has come, has come, has come, has come. I'll read you two more. First John chapter 4, verse 2. New International Version. NIV. This is how you can recognize the Spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. Hmm. Spirit of Antichrist again. And just for fun, got to throw in the message at the end. One of the most idiotic nonsense books I've ever read. First uh, John chapter 4, verse 2 through 3. Here's how you test for the genuine Spirit of God. Everyone who confesses openly his faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who came, past tense, past tense, as an actual flesh and blood person, comes from God and belongs to God. And everyone who refuses to confess faith in Jesus has nothing in common with God. This is the spirit of Antichrist that you heard was coming. Well, here it is, sooner than we thought. <laughs> sooner than we thought. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, you see, the reason that the modern churches are so wicked is because they literally have invoked the spirit of Antichrist. They open up a perverted corrupted Bible version, a perversion of God's holy book here, the King James Bible. And you say, well, it's the same, it's just they, they you know, updated some of the... Friend, let me tell you something. If you're ignorant about the Bible version issue, this King James Bible right here is a Syrian, has a Syrian New Testament. All other versions, all the other new versions rely on a Egyptian New Testament. The vast majority, over 99% of extant Greek manuscripts, in other words, manuscripts that are in museums or collections or whatever else, 99% match the King James Bible. It's the Textus Receptus, the received text. All other new versions rely on less than 1% of the extant manuscripts. Hmm. And those exact same manuscripts, less than 1%, are the same ones that are used by the Jehovah's Witnesses and the Roman Catholic Church, to translate their corrupt Bibles. Oh, and uh, the uh, two oldest and best manuscripts that they talk about a lot, you'll see that. Not in the two oldest and best manuscripts, you'll read that in the footnotes of these new versions. Um, it's Codices B and Aleph, Vaticanus, Sinaiticus. All right? And guess what? Both of those corrupted books include other books within the canon of Scripture, the apocryphal books, deuterocanonical books in other words and they put those in added scriptures in and yet the new versions most of them the niv the esv and all these others usually they won't include those apocryphal books and then they'll tell you that this is an accurate translation of the best available greek manuscripts their greek manuscripts include other books and yet they'll translate and they'll not put the other books in dishonesty they're liars they're liars so if you go to some kind of a Babel building someplace or if you're around other professing Christians and they're reading from an ESV or a NIV or New King James or whatever else, you are literally having somebody that's opening up a book that fails the test for the whether it's of God. And it actually literally has a spirit of Antichrist in it. I mean, if you came and you said to me, uh, hey, what are you doing? I say, um, oh, we're just about ready to start a um, little ceremony here. We're going to be in, in, invoking the spirit of Antichrist and placing it upon people. You want, you want it? You want me to put the spirit of Antichrist upon you? And yet you'll go to some church building someplace or some whatever. You'll watch a video where some guy's reading from a new version. You say, well, I, you know, I prefer the King James, but I'll just listen anyhow. Um, you're listening to the spirit of Antichrist. 
And if you think that you can sit there and listen to the spirit of Antichrist being read to you, uh, and it doesn't affect you spiritually, uh, you got another thing coming. You want the Holy Spirit to go into your mind, not the spirit of Antichrist. Please be careful who you listen to.